Well, it's good to see you all uh, this at this lunch hour. I appreciate you braving the weather. Uh, it seems like it's getting somewhat dark out there. But uh, we do want to welcome you to uh, yet, yet one more <laughs> Holy Week uh, service here at Third Presbyterian. It's been a, a wonderful week so far and do uh, also want to uh, invite you to our evening Monday Thursday service tonight at 7 o'clock here uh, in the sanctuary as well. If this is your first time with us, we do welcome you and do also want to invite you to uh, a fellowship lunch immediately following this short service up in the fellowship hall. Just follow, follow the masses. They'll show you the way. Um, but I have been delighted to uh, be with you here in this holy place for these last three days as we are um, commending Jesus of Nazareth as the Son of God as we have been considering together the authority of his teaching, specifically the authority of his teaching on the subject of love and the authority of his teaching on the subject of love and his most famous set of teaching, uh, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapters 5 to 7. Tuesday we looked at loving our enemies from Matthew chapter 5. Yesterday we looked at loving God from Matthew chapter 6 and today we'll conclude at least this portion of our time together with loving our neighbors from Matthew chapter 7. And it is the authority of these teachings and all the teachings of Jesus which prompted many people to say throughout Jesus' life what we have recorded by the Apostle John in chapter 7 verse 46 when officers reported back to the Pharisees that no one ever spoke like this man. And so it is with that theme in mind that we have been looking together at Jesus' teaching, commending him as the Son of God. So with that said, let's turn our attention to our final uh, text under this theme in Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 5. If you have a Bible, I invite you to turn there with me as we read the Holy Scripture together. Judge not that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that's in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye, you hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. And now we skip down to verse 12 of chapter 7. And here Jesus says, So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Let's pray together. Almighty God and Father in heaven, we bow together here this afternoon in this holy place to consider your one and only Son. To consider Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God come in the flesh, who has taught like no one else has ever taught. And so, Father, we do ask for the Spirit of Jesus this afternoon. We do ask for your Holy Spirit to come and to open our eyes to see this precise and profound teaching of Jesus, which here commends him as the Son of God. And would our hearts be warm and open to receive him this afternoon. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray together. Amen. Well, on the subject of loving neighbors or loving others, Jesus had a very basic teaching which he applied in several ways. And that basic teaching was the last verse that we read together, Matthew chapter 7 verse 12, which says, Whatever you wish that others would do to you, 
do also to them for this is the law and the prophets. That's Jesus' basic teaching for loving another person. And one particular aspect of that teaching would be our relationship to other people's faults. So in doing unto others as we would have done unto ourselves, we have a specific aspect of relating and loving to people that way as we think about how we engage and interact with other people's faults. Everyone is flawed. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, the scripture tells us. How we relate to that is the subject of Jesus' teaching in the first five verses of Matthew chapter 7. Now in everyday speech, everyday parlance, this way we relate to other people's faults, we usually term by the word judging or something to that effect. And now Jesus' teaching here in these first five verses is very precise and very profound, as I said while we prayed, both on the act of judging and on the facts of judging. One, he has something very specific to say about performing this act of judgment. And two, he has some very specific facts to tell us that are true about people who do this activity. And of course, he's going to recommend another way of engaging and loving our neighbor, specifically their faults. But as we look together at verse 1 on this act of judging others, and Jesus says, judge not that you might not be judged, I think it's good to ask, what does the Lord Jesus mean by judging? Because I don't think that he's excluding all judgment. He can't be excluding all judgment because in verse 6 of this very same passage, he asks his followers to exercise good judgment by not throwing before what he calls swine, people who disregard holy things. He exercises them to use a certain kind of judgment. So Jesus is not outlawing all types of judgment, but one type of judgment specifically. And that, the type of judgment that he's outlawing or prohibiting is what we probably would refer to as condemnation. Uh, one teacher on the New Testament, Leon Morris, has described Jesus, the type of judgment Jesus is outlawing here as by saying, what is forbidden by the Lord is the readiness to find fault. The readiness to find fault fault. I, I wonder how many of you have either seen or read Harper Lee's To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh, it's one of my favorite films and one of my favorite books. And you might remember the character of uh, Mrs. Henry Lafayette DuBose. For those of you that may not know, she's a character in the story told by Harper Lee of as these two young children Scout and Jim live in an old uh, 1930s Alabama town she sits on her front porch and every day as Jim and Scout uh, these two young children walk home they greet Mrs. DeBose and she's sitting on her front porch and if you've seen the film you know right at the very beginning of uh, the film uh, this is the one where uh, Atticus Finch is played by Gregory Peck you know that as as uh, Scout, uh, actually played by a young lady from Birmingham, as she's walking by Mrs. DeBose's porch, she says, well, hello, Mrs. DeBose. <laughs> and Mrs. DeBose says, don't you say hello to me, you ugly girl. You know, and as I think about the type of relationship uh, to other people that Jesus is outlawing, I think about that. I think about... Um, a sort of internal disposition that is ready to find fault. And we may not, with Mrs. DeBose, be sitting on our porch uh, looking uh, to scoff at other people as we rock in our rocking chairs or sit in a seat of daily condemnation as we sort of lay out outbursts <laughs> of our judgments on other people. We might not verbalize them the way she does, but we might screen them in our minds having never have them come out of our mouths. And so this is something that the Lord Jesus says, do not do this. Do not relate to other people's faults, ready to condemn them, ready to scoff at them, ready to make your assessments of either their appearance or their past and make that known at your discretion. Don't do that, Jesus says. And in... 
the last few parts of the verses we're looking at today, he explains to us why. So he's given us the activity of judgment, and he has said that that activity, that way of life, that posture towards other people and their faults, he prohibits. And now he tells us why. First of all, that to do so, to judge others, Jesus says, is actually to invite judgment on ourselves. To make a uh, practice and a habit and really a reputation of criticizing others is actually to invite criticism upon ourselves. If not now, certainly later. There will come a day when for all our criticisms and our judgments and our harsh, wor our harsh words, Jesus says, we shall all have to give an Account, And this is his teaching in verse 2 of chapter 7 when he says, For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. That's a fact that you can count on. And then second, to judge others is also to ignore our own faults. For Mrs. DeBose, it's to ignore the own ugliness in her own heart and in her own life. And Jesus likens this fact about judgment to uh, objects in our eyes. And there's two different sorts of objects he describes. He says that the judging person who criticizes the slightest fault in another while ignoring a glaring fault in themselves is like a person who glares at a spick of dust or maybe even a little flake of skin on someone's eyelash that just bothers you because it's there. It's to be so upset and enraged at that spick that you've completely forgotten the splinter of wood sticking out of your own eyeball. Now I know that's graphic but I think that's the force with which the Lord Jesus speaks. And he says very bluntly that the critical person the judging person, the condemning person, is actually the blind person. Because they cannot see clearly, Jesus says. In fact, they cannot see at all. Because in their making and rendering of judgments, they're actually blind in their mental perception because there's something in their eye. They're not seeing clearly. They're not reading the situation accurately and therefore they are in fact but hypocrites. There's a mask in front of them that they cannot see, Jesus teaches. And so that's the act. The act is condemned. This type of condemning, Jesus himself condemns. He prohibits. But the, the authority of his teaching is that you actually, we actually cannot see anyone or anything as it actually is if we make this our habit of living. And this is the revolutionary idea that you, we don't know a situation, a person, a story, anything until we consider our own blemishes first. And so his instruction as he concludes is the word of God and very familiar words I'm sure to us all that we are to take the log out of our own eye. To take the bigger sin, the greater sin out of our own life. And then Jesus says you can see clearly. If someone enrages us by their behavior, we turn our eyes inward and say, where is that behavior worse in my own life? And then Jesus says, once you've done that, you actually will see that person more clearly. Now that is amazing wisdom. That is wisdom that you can only find from God himself. And yet at the very end of Matthew, he says, G Matthew reports that Jesus spoke not as their scribes. He didn't get this from any tradition. He didn't inherit it from anyone. It came from his own divinity. And so brothers and sisters, as we close these three days together, having commended Jesus and having seen how no one ever spoke like he spoke on the subject of love, on the subject of loving our enemies, when the world teaches us to hate them on the subject of loving our God and placing our treasure in heaven on the subject of loving our neighbors and turning our judgment in on ourselves first I hope that we have seen that truly no one ever spoke like this man 
And that as you and I move through our holy week for the rest of the next four days, that we would remember that we come to worship and admire God on the cross. It's not just a good teacher, but it's actually the teaching of this teacher that reveals him as God. And that means when we look at the cross on Good Friday and as we celebrate the resurrection on Easter Sunday, we are confirmed that the words we have in these pages are actually the words of God. And therefore they are life to those who would ingest them, to those who would implement them, and to those who would live day in and day out by them. So as we come to a close here, I commend the Lord Jesus to you for your devotion and for your worship. Shall we close in a word of prayer? Father in heaven, how sweet it is to gather here together and to consider heavenly truth as we hear it from the mouth of the only one who ever came from heaven, who came down from God to us to save us, to teach us, and to love us. And how we pray, Father, in our devotion to Him, in our following of Him, that we would mirror His teaching as He mirrored it in His own life. And now as we move toward the table into fellowshipping over our daily bread, we give you thanks and praise for that and for those kind servants of yours who prepared it. And may we go in peace as we remember you. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray and worship together. Amen.